If this is your first time watching a guide on this channel, click the first link in the description to learn how they work. Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old school RuneScape video. Today, my 1 to 99 farming guide. Farming, as the name suggests, is planting and gathering resources from different farming patches all throughout RuneScape, typically to collect herbs and secondaries for potions, as well as fruit and other crops to pay farmers to look after your plants. If you look at it from an XP per hour perspective, farming can be either one of the slowest skills in the game, or the absolute fastest one if you take the expensive route. However, since crops take a long time to grow, you can't actively train this skill unless doing a specific method that I'll mention in a bit. If you go for the farmer's outfit, you will gain an extra 2.5% experience for everything you farm in the game, and you will be able to get it with the method I mentioned before. And as you are harvesting your crops, keep an eye out for the Tangle Root Pet. So, let's begin! Now, this guide in specific, along with a few more throughout the series, is going to be slightly different, since we have a ton of options to train with. The other ones being Magic, Herblore, Crafting, Fletching, Hunter, Smithing, and Cooking. So, let me explain how this one is going to work, and we can skip this lecture in the future. The one thing you should know about farming is that if you look at the skill guide in the game, the amount of things that you can farm at whatever level could be a little bit overwhelming. However, if you break it down, there are three main ways to train farming. The slow but profitable one in the form of allotment patches, to gather herbs, flowers and other things such as vegetables or fruit. The quick but expensive one in the form of tree runs, and the also relatively slow but inexpensive one in the form of the Hosidious Tide Farm, which you can train actively. Because of these ways to train, you can honestly farm whatever you want as long as it sticks to your budget. I am not going to tell you to strictly farm Dragonfruit Trees at level 81, since doing so could be very expensive. Rather, I will tell you when it becomes efficient to do certain things, and the separate guides will focus on the method itself, and you can farm whatever you decide to go with. Now, I can understand some people might go like, Hey, what a useless fucking guide if you don't tell us what to do at certain levels, you stupid cunt. But my point here is that since farming is a super diverse skill, I want you to train with whatever is most convenient for you. It's not really worth going broke for 99 farming, and in my opinion, it's not worth waiting several months to get 99 while becoming filthy rich. It's always nice to have a balance of both. So with that speech out of the way, here's the roadmap to 99. Just like runecrafting, we will start farming by not farming at all, and taking care of a few quests. Other guides, including the wiki, will tell you to do certain quests without taking the farming requirement into account, so I would recommend you do them in the following order. First, go for the Goblin General subquest in Recipe for Disaster to go from 1 to 9 farming. Then, do Fairy Tale Part 1 to go from level 9 to level 20, not only for the experience, but to unlock the Magic Secators and as a requirement for Fairy Tale Part 2 to unlock Fairy Rings. After this, do the Forgettable Tale to go from 20 to 26, and next, do the Garden of Tranquility to go from 26 to 30. Afterwards, complete the Enlightened Journey to go from 30 to 32. And finally, do my Arms Big Adventure to go from 32 to 35. Now, you may not have exactly level 35 since you will be farming a few things during the quests, giving you a little bit more experience in the end. Now, before we continue, I want to make one thing very clear. You don't need to complete any of these quests, and if you don't care about efficiency, you are welcome to farm whatever patches and trees you want to get to this point. So, you are welcome to plant the highest level seeds you can use when it comes to herbs, flowers, allotment trees, and so on. In my personal opinion, this is a great way to do it, since you don't have to wait for anything to grow, and as long as you have decent levels, you can complete all of these quests very easily, and you won't even have to train farming for the requirements. So, with that out of the way, let's swap to the methods themselves. Now that we are 35 farming, here's where the only three branching paths will start. At level 34, you will unlock the Tide Farm in Hosidius. This is a way to actively train farming, and while it doesn't offer any significant profit or loss, you will gain points to unlock rewards such as the farmer's outfit, the seed box, and other useful things. If you stick to the Tide Farm, you can get more experience by using higher level seeds at 54 and then at level 74. Next, let's look at a slow but profitable path. Since we are technically 35 at this point, you can start planting Raynars for a lot of profit. And while you do your herb runs, you can also plant the Limpur roots as well as anything in the allotment patches for a bit of extra XP. Here's where the diversity of the skill and your budget come into play. 
You can plant whatever herbs you feel are best for you, and you can go to the wiki to look at the average profit per patch when planting certain herbs. If you are only looking for profit, I would recommend planting Herolanders or higher, but I would recommend planting seeds that aren't super expensive in case they die. Finally, let's look at the quick but expensive path. At level 35, we have access to willow and banana trees. You can plant to these and pay the local farmer to look after them to guarantee juicy XP drops and move on to better trees when possible. The only thing you should know is that normal trees take at different times to fully grow and fruit trees all grow after 16 hours. Because of this, I would recommend doing one full tree run per day but if you want to maximize your experience, you can replant them as soon as they are done. There are trees that take longer to grow and will be covered on the separate method. These trees are Calquat, Teak, Mahogany, Celastrus, Redwood, Spirit, and Crystal trees. Besides these standard methods, here are a few honorable mentions that I will not cover on a separate video since they're pretty straightforward. First, you can increase your experience gains by planting bushes, cactuses, and giant seaweeds starting at levels 10, 55, and 23 respectively. Second, you can fight the Hespori at levels 65 farming every 22 to 32 hours depending on when you planted it to gain its helpful seeds covered on another video. And lastly, starting at level 45, you can do farming contracts at the farming guild, which provides a decent chunk of XP as well as decent profit if you get lucky with the drops. And that is how you become a master of farming. This guide might have been all over the place, but this is where your feedback comes in handy. Since this will be the format for the other 7 skilled guides mentioned during the intro, I want you to tell me in the comments if this one was easy to follow, and if it wasn't, please tell me what you would like to see changed in the future. Also, if you like this one, let me know. Make sure to check out all the links in the description to learn about all the methods I talked about in this guide. Thank you very much for watching, and best of luck on your journey to 99.